this is going to be a quick video showing you how you can create a custom pop-up card like the one you're seeing now. And this can also easily be extended to also create something like this. For example, a button that expands to provide input fields. As most things in Flutter, this is surprisingly easy to do. There's just a couple of small configurations and custom classes that we need to make. But yeah, it shouldn't take us more than a couple of minutes. So let's get started. I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by DataCamp. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data analytical skills. They have courses for all different skill levels, from Excel 101 to SQL to advanced courses. Data analytics is a massive field, but it's becoming extremely accessible. Just like Flutter is streamlining cross-platform app development and making it possible for you and me to build an app on our own, so are programming languages like Python and R making it accessible for anyone to analyze data or do things like machine learning. Datacamp combines video classes with practical exercises and skills assessments to help guide you. The lessons are bite-sized and can fit your schedule, and their mobile version also allows you to learn from anywhere. I'm currently taking the unsupervised learning in Python course. Fun fact, I actually studied data mining at university, and going through this, I realized how much I still have to learn. It's extremely important to diversify your skills, and data analytics is one of the biggest fields in our industry. A data camp subscription starts at only $25 a month for unlimited access to all of their courses. You don't need a credit card to try it. Use my link in the description and check out the first chapter of any course for free. Let's jump back to Flutter and start with the code. All of the code is available on GitHub, and I also recommend that you check out the other videos in the series. We won't be going into detail for the UI of this application. We are entirely just concerned with this pop-up effect, and I wanna show you exactly what you need to do to create something like this. However, all of the code is documented, so you can take a look and see exactly what is happening if you are interested. But yeah, to begin, let's explore how we can actually create this button and this expanding effect. So we will jump to the add to do button file. And this widget is the actual button and everything below here. So this child over here is the actual UI of that button. What we care about is this hero and we care about the navigator. So unless you are a beginner in Flutter, you will probably be familiar with the Navigator. And normally you would use Navigator with a material page root or some other custom root. And the root definition that you give here is basically the animation that will occur. And in Flutter, if you use the material page root, then it will default to the platform specific uh, root. So for example, on iOS, it would do a slide transition and on Android, it will do this fade from the bottom. But over here, what we're doing is we are using this custom hero dialog route. And as you can see, this is uh, called in a gesture detector. So on the on tap. And if we take a look at this code, you can see that we are extending a page route and then we are overriding a couple of methods. And most of these do not require much of an explanation, but let's quickly go through each of these. We pass in a widget builder and the widget builder is what we will return in this build page. And that is exactly that. That is the next page that we will build. So if we go back to this add to do button, you can see that in the builder, we return that we want to build the add to do pop-up card. And the add to do pop-up card is this card over here. So this orange card that you can see on the screen. And as you can see in our code, that is the only thing that we pass in or the only argument. It's this builder function. And for the rest, that is just some defaults that we will set. And the first thing that we will take a look at is the full screen dialog. And for this example, it doesn't actually matter whether we set it to false or if we set it to true, you can read uh, more about what the full screen dialog does. And the actual description would be here. So whether this is false or true, it doesn't really matter for this particular use case. What does matter is the opaque and opaque we are setting to false. And this will make it so that the underlying root is actually visible. So for example, if we set this to be true and we do a transition, you will see that uh, the screen behind is now black. So we can't see what is uh, the root behind this root. So setting the opaque value to false will make the root behind it actually visible, as you can see. And then barrier dismissible, this will allow you to actually dismiss the barrier. So for example, when this expands and we see that we have this opaque value here, if we tap anywhere outside of this card, then it will minimize or it will pop back to the previous route. Then we have the transition duration, so how long the transition will last. 
maintain state, so you can read up more on that. Barrier color is the color of the barrier. So for example, if we set this to be red and do the same, you can see that the color is set to be red. However, we are using black 54, and that is essentially black with some opacity applied to it. And that is what allows us to actually uh, create the see-throughness if see-throughness is even a word. And then finally, we have this build transitions. And normally in a page transition, this is where you would uh, do some animation. So for example, you would do a slide transition or a fade transition or something like that. However, in this particular use case, we do not actually need any transitions to occur because all of the animations will be handled by the hero widget. So in this instance, all we are doing is just returning the child. But if you wanted to do more advanced animations, then you can make use of this animation and secondary animation. I have a full course on animations in Flutter. So if you want to learn more about all of these different things, then you can take a look at that. So cool, with this custom Euro dialogue that we made, we have a custom page transition. Now the final piece of the puzzle is to actually combine this with a Euro widget. And if you're not familiar, a Euro widget is something that will animate one widget from one screen to the next screen. So regardless of the root that you use or the roots animation that you use, the Euro will just take this widget and then animate it in a nice way to the next page. However, seeing as the root transition that we have now is this dialogue pop-up essentially, it allows us to create this effect that makes it seem like we're still at the same page. However, we are at a different page. And using euros in Flutter is real easy. All we're doing is we are wrapping the widget that we want to animate in a euro widget, and then we need to provide it a tag. And this tag over here is just a string. So this euro add to do, we are using it in two places. We are using it in the add to do button. So as you can see, we have this euro with the tag, and then we're also using it in the add to do pop-up card. So visually this button over here is wrapped in a Euro widget and this whole card is wrapped in a Euro widget. And that is what creates the animation from this button to this one over here. And this is where some experimentation will be required from your side. When you transition from one widget to another, it won't always be as smooth. So for example, you won't be able to transition from a normal button to a container but you can transition from a container to a container and then animate stuff like the shape and the color and the position of different widgets that are within that container. So as an example, here we can set that the color will be blue maybe. And now if we minimize this and try again, you can see that it does like a quick uh, transition to that new color as well. But yeah, hero transitions are best used when the actual object is exactly the same. So if there aren't too many visual differences. So let's just revert this to what we had. And a good example for that would be these cards. So for example, these to-do cards, if we, for example, tap homework, it does a hero transition for the entire card. And if we tap this at the bottom, the same thing. So it just animates it into position. Something that's also nice is that these list views you can see that it actually takes away the space. So here we have this card, if we tap it, then now there's nothing in that space over there. And then it just animates back to that. And all of that's handled for you automatically. You might note that there's one additional thing that I'm setting in this hero, and that is this create rect tween. And this is not something that is needed. That is just the curve that we will use to animate the actual transition. So the curve, I mean how it would go from this state to the open state. By default, we can actually set this uh, to be nothing. So it will just use the default one. However, I'm not a big fan of the default one. You'll see that once I tap this plus now, it will do like this little half uh, arc curve. And uh, yeah, I, I prefer the custom one that I made. So if you are interested in that, you can take a look at the code. But yeah, it's fairly straightforward. We are just creating a new tween that is a rect tween. And then we are just defining that it's literally a linear uh, rectangle. And we are using this custom curve and the ease out curve. In my animation course, I go into great detail on different tweens and combining tweens and what a tween is exactly. But yeah, as I said, this is not really necessary for the effect. It's just something that I visually prefer because I do not like the standard Euro transition. One thing to note is that if you use your own custom rect uh, tween, you would need to define it for every single euro that you want the animation to occur. 
So uh, you'll see that for both of the euros that we are using, we are defining that it has this create rig tween, as you can see. And that is literally that. There's one extra gotcha that you need to be aware of. And that is that in the uh, to-do card, so in this one over here, you can see that I'm wrapping the content in this single child scroll view. And let's actually just remove this as an example. And now if we run the example again, you'll see that we get this overflow error. So let's actually toggle slow animations and you'll see what I'm talking about. So as I'm tapping it, we get a overflow. And that is because there's not enough space to render all of this content. And an easy hack for that is just to wrap the content in a single child scroll view. There are other alternatives that you can also do. Something that I like to do is to create a separate widget that defines whether the content should be shown or not. And that separate widget would have a layout builder. And then depending on the size of the layout builder, so the size that's available on screen or the size that's available for the layout builder widget, it would de uh, define whether it should show the child widget or not. But yeah, there's other tricks that you can do as well, but the easiest one is probably just this single child scroll view. And yeah, with this, you can see that uh, we no longer get that overflow error. And yeah, that is finally that. The actual cards that you see here are exactly the same. We aren't doing anything differently. We are also using a single child scroll view and we are also only using a euro and the, that custom euro dialogue transition that we made. If you need more help, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to assist. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and yeah, tell me what you want to see in the next one. Until then, cheers.